The Samsung Galaxy S23 is now available for purchase. Samsung begins 2023 with a facelift and significant hardware upgrade to its flagship phone series. And, while some things appear to be the same, there is much to be excited about here. The Galaxy S23 finally eliminates the distinction between US and EU models by dropping the Exynos processor variants. In fact, it includes a special edition Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 designed specifically for Galaxy phones. It has been tuned by Samsung and provides more punch than the standard Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is already quite powerful. The storage options are the one thing to look out for in the Galaxy S23, and will tell you right away. The Galaxy S23 128GB has a UFS 3.1 chip, while the rest of the phones in the lineup have UFS 4.0 and LPDDR5X. The S23 appears to be a natural evolution of the S22. The battery has been increased by 200 milliamp hours, the design has been improved slightly, and the selfie camera has been upgraded to 12 megapixel from 10 megapixel last year. The main camera module appears to be a rehash of the S22 series, but this time we get 8K video at 30 FPS as an option, rather than 24 FPS. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 in this case is a limited edition, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy. It not only has a slightly faster tick rate, but it also aids in the camera trickery behind the curtains. To achieve much more convincing post-processing effects, the processor's semantic segmentation intelligently identifies objects, faces, body parts, what's in the foreground and what's in the background. That is also possible with the Galaxy's selfie camera. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. If you purchase the entry-level Galaxy S23 128GB, you will notice that it has a slight disadvantage over its sibling. This entry-level Galaxy S23 will have a UFS 3.1 storage chip and LPDDR5 RAM. Any other Galaxy S23, whether the 256GB upgrade option, or any Galaxy S23 Plus or Galaxy S23 Ultra, gets a much faster UFS 4.0 and LPDDR5X RAM chip. Another reason to upgrade, the system of the Galaxy S23 already takes up to 40GB of storage out of the box, the S23 Plus and S23 Ultra software takes up to 60GB. This means that if you buy the entry-level 128GB model, you will quickly run out of storage space. This, along with the speed boost, is why we strongly advise upgrading to the 256GB model. The base Galaxy S23 is shown here, but the family will include three devices, the Galaxy S23, Galaxy S23 Plus, and Galaxy S23 Ultra, with the latter being the absolute beast, as is customary. The non-plus is usually the smallest member of the series. With its small size and low price, you could argue that the Galaxy S23 is the true flagship, as it is expected to be the most popular phone. If you were hoping for hot and vibrant colors on the Galaxy S23, you're out of luck. Phantom Black, Cream, Green, and Lavender are the official colors. They are earthy and subdued, keeping a low profile in an understated elegance. As is customary, exclusive colors are available from Samsung.com, this year's are Lime and Graphite. They appear to complement the new design of the S23 phones. The bold camera modules that are glued to the phone's frame and protrude from behind have vanished. The back is now completely flat, with only the lens-protecting metal rings protruding. So, yes, the phone will still rock if laid flat on a table. However, the Galaxy S23 series design has been unified, and they all resemble the S22 Ultra from last year. The side metal frame is still flattish, with a slight arch, and the screen is completely flat. There are no edge curves here. This all works in tandem with a body that can be described as compact. The Galaxy S23 is quite pocketable by 2023 standards. If using a phone with one hand is more important than media consumption, we'd recommend this phone. Samsung is at the top of the AMOLED game. The company has spent the last decade perfecting its bright, vivid, sharp, and beautiful screens. The Galaxy S23 maintains this, but increases the brightness, significantly. If necessary, the tiny phone can reach 1750 nits of peak brightness. It still has a 6.1 inch diagonal and an aspect ratio of around 19.5 by 9 while remaining narrow and tall. 
We get a PPI ratio of around 425 with an FHD resolution of 1080 by 2340. That's quite sharp, you won't be able to count the pixels on this screen. When we disable the software optimizations, we can see that the screen leans slightly toward greenish tints. Surprisingly, our test units found the Galaxy S22 from last year to have more accurate colors than the current S23. When we use the phone as a daily driver, however, we keep the eye comfort shield feature enabled, which adjusts color temperature based on the time of day. And the panel's cold tendencies are never an issue, if at all noticeable. Unfortunately, there isn't much to report on the Galaxy S23 camera. Like last year, it has a 50 megapixel main sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor, and a 10 megapixel P telephoto lens. They appear to be the same cameras on the outside, but the power of the Galaxy Edition Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 changes some things. The Galaxy S23 appears to be tuned for slightly warmer photos than the S22. Also, we couldn't help but notice that it has a more powerful HDR, further flattening out the high dynamics in a shot. It's quite impressive, but some users may prefer the slightly more contrasty looks of an S22 for example. The Galaxy S23, on the other hand, appears to deliver more realistic colors, saturation appears to be dialed back just a bit, but that's enough to rein in those vibrant greens and neon skies that we've seen from Samsung's in the past. The calibration and rules for the ultra-wide camera are the same. While the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is supposed to have insane subject separation for portrait modes, we don't see any significant improvements. This is primarily due to the fact that Samsung's portrait mode was already quite good in this regard. We would have preferred a more convincing background blur or less smoothing on facial features. Aside from that, it's a pretty good portrait mode. The upgrade to a 12 megapixel selfie sensor is evident here, with some impressive detail in the shots. The dynamics are also well handled, and the Snapdragon semantic segmentation is used for better portraits, this is the first smartphone to use Qualcomm technology for the selfie side. We can now record 8K video at up to 30 frames per second, rather than just 24. We also noticed a significant improvement in stabilization, despite the fact that this was marketed as an upgrade for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. The new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy appears to be extremely promising. We ran it through our benchmarks, and it appears to be capable of delivering stellar performance over longer periods of time, no doubt thanks to the Galaxy S23's improved heat dissipation system. But life isn't about setting goals. In use, the Galaxy S23 is a competent performer. The phone is smooth and responsive, with no hiccups or stutters. Despite the fact that it is too small to be a power user's dream, it can definitely show off its abilities if you use the deck suite for example. Android 13 is the most recent Android build available, and it is what the Galaxy S23 will ship with. But, you know, Samsung likes to do its own thing, so its Android phones have the elaborate One UI Reskin, the most recent of which is One UI 5.1. Samsung's software is jam-packed with features that completely alter the way you interact with Android, simple split-screen shortcuts, edge panels that can be pulled in from the side for multitasking, and complete integration with Samsung's ecosystem via SmartThings Hub. Not to mention DeX, which can transform your phone into a mobile desktop machine if you have an external monitor. It's also worth noting that Samsung's software update game has significantly improved. New flagships now promise four major Android updates and five years of security patches. That means the Galaxy S23 will initially ship with Android 13, but will eventually receive Android 17. So, as expected, the battery capacity increases by 200 mAh to 3900 mAh. There are two possibilities here, the extra 200 mAh may be there to balance out the demands of a more powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, or it may not. Alternatively, it could work in tandem with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2's power efficiency to improve battery life. In any case, we are optimistic that there will be no decrease in endurance when compared to the Galaxy S22. In other words, 12 hours of continuous browsing or 9 to 10 hours of mixed usage per day. Since acquiring AKG, Samsung has steadily improved the sound of its mobile devices. The Galaxy S23, as is now standard, has a stereo setup with a bottom driver and an amplified earpiece. They usually sound good, but it appears that Samsung has done some improvements. 
The Galaxy S23 speakers sound great, they can get loud, but they're balanced and have a nice thump behind them. However, the haptics on the flagship Galaxy series are excellent, and the Galaxy S23 clicks with very satisfying feedback. Obviously, the iPhone 14 will be a pulling force that will threaten the success of the Galaxy S23. It does, however, have flaws, as Apple only provides a 60Hz screen and two cameras with the base iPhone 14. The Galaxy S23 will launch with a 120Hz screen and a full trio of cameras, sure to please portrait and zooming fans. But what about the Android platform? Google's latest Pixel 7 Duo, on the other hand, is very appealing. The base Pixel 7 costs $600, which is an absolute steal. And the Pixel 7 Pro is only $100 more expensive than the Galaxy S23, with a larger screen and the premium Google Assistant experience. However, Samsung has been in the game for some time and has built a strong ecosystem around its phones. The feature-rich One UI, DeX, SmartThings, Galaxy Watches and Galaxy Buds, as well as the Galaxy Smart Tags, there are plenty of reasons to choose a Samsung and keep it at the center of your IoT life. If you are upgrading from an older model, such as an S20, it appears that there will be plenty of compelling reasons to do so. If you have a more recent phone, it may appear that the Galaxy S23 doesn't generate enough heat to warrant an upgrade, and you'd be right. The Galaxy S21 and S22 are still fantastic phones. This only demonstrates Samsung's current level of quality, these flagship devices can now last and feel relevant for far longer than two years. And that makes spending $800 on them easier, right?